Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoyed your 30 or so minute break. And we are back here for a uh, pretty big one here against Dom One Kia and Gen G. It's interesting because if we had have been looking at this towards the end of spring, we'd be like, oh, well, this will be another Dom One Kia rollover of Gen G. But that is absolutely not what we're thinking now. Well, we still have differing opinions, but I'd like to get into it a little bit later because uh, I think uh, we both expect the series to go all the way. Yeah. Uh, but the outcome. You know, I think Gen.G, I think they got I think there's but absolutely no, like, no one should be expecting Dom One Kia to win this series, 100%. I think this should be expected to be a Gen.G 2-0. And if you hear Atlas say that... I have not said anything on air about any, any other opinion. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Absolutely okay. no idea. Uh, let's, uh, let's bring up points of the match so that I can avoid this awkward situation. <laughs> as Dom One Kia versus Gen.G. Dom One Kia will be on our... Uh, Whichever side they would like, they are going to be our home team for this one. And 7-0 uh, undefeated Gen.G. Now, I've got an interesting story for you. Um, their longest winning record was in spring of last year, and uh, it was broken by T1. Do you know who their last, uh, their last opponent is in round one? It's T1, isn't it? It is. It is indeed T1. So, they need to beat Damwon Kia. And Damwon Kia have been pretty good at beating Gen.G in the past. It hasn't been something that they've had too much trouble with. We remember the spring final, uh, or at least you can try to. It was pretty quick. Uh, I was expecting more of a dig towards my uh, Dan Faith in, in Gen.G. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, that, one's, that one's run its course. Has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's uh, only you that I brings think, it up these yeah, days. You're actually right. It's preemptively, but it should stop doing it. You're completely right. And I think that Dom and Kia have shown that there are a considerable amount of weaknesses. However, their top side is still insane. Like, nothing that we've seen changes. The fact that Showmaker, Kenyon, um, and Khan are super, super good. So yeah. That's what I'm going to be looking towards today as well. Yeah, I think the bottom lane is the question mark. Of course, everyone knows that there is a. Uh, going to be a newcomer to the 80 carry role potentially next week but that hasn't happened just yet having a look at the stats Gen G with a 7-0 record are of course going to have good stats it's just sort of how that one goes Damon Kia though looking at theirs looking pretty pitiful outside of the Baron percentage means that you know their macro play in the late game is still pretty good um, just unfortunately they haven't been able to uh, get themselves to those positions recently and here they are, going to welcome out Dom One Kia towards Low Park. And it is going to be once again Ghost and Barrel towards that bottom side of the map. Let's see how well they're going to perform. Always such a question mark. And I also. To try and work out what the problems are for Dom One Kia is actually quite difficult. And I think that what yeah. they're doing to try and solve their problems aren't necessarily the, the main things here. As, uh, Ghost and Beryl has, have been underperforming, but is it all Go Ghost's fault? Is it all Beryl's fault? That's, uh, that's sort of part of the question mark, right? 
It's a difficult one, because as you already uh, uh, pointed out, uh, Rahel will be called up for next week. Currently, they're um, uh, bot laner in challengers, but I don't I don't think it's an individual player thing. I think that, as you pointed out, it's both, but Beryl seems so much harder to replace, right? Because um, yeah. they have mentioned that he is one of their main shot callers, and if you look at the former team last year, that makes sense, whereas Genji, they don't have to change anything. They nope. don't have to do anything, because they're looking great. This is some hashtag no changes in a very big way. Outside of Rascal breaking his leg, by the way, or at least hurting his leg a little bit. That was uh, it's a little bit unfortunate. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that gets better soon and isn't going to affect his play uh, in any way. Probably just be like an ankle or a foot thing. I don't know, but uh, that is that is uh, that's that's a, it's a little casty type situation. <laughs> a little bit unfortunate there for Rascal. But Genji looking extraordinarily dominant. It's been a while since I've uh, actually cast a Genji game. I'm trying to cast my mind back to, to the last one that I was actually on, and I just don't really remember. So uh, we'll be good to check in um, in a more, uh, you know, more actually here kind of way. Of course, watch them play a lot. As uh, this is going to be your roster, no changes just yet. Uh, expecting to see them next week. But Damonkia not looking like their world championship selves. Oh, or their summer selves, right? Even looking... Not even. Oh, sorry, uh, spring oh. selves. Um, so in spring, they also still looked strong. Yet, yeah, we saw some hints, right, of the mistakes that were going to plague them on Kiao that have been plaguing them both in MSI and during summer. Yeah. Um, there were hints of it, but it was nowhere near. And that's why it was kind of surprising to see MSI on one hand, where we were all like, wow, they really dropped off. And that's yeah. understandable if you're going to a, diff a different tournament, you know, you're, you're moving across the world, like that can happen, but they then come back that the exact same issues is not great. Um, however, fortunately for Domokia, the top side is still looking great. Yeah, still looking okay. Um, compared to Rascal, it's a little bit of a difficult one. Let's have a look at those uh, solo kills. Um, I think the next highest in the LCK is seven, and Rascal's on 16. He's, uh, he's been taking names up there. We'll see whether Khan is gonna be able to hold on. And it's interesting because when we think about like, ah, oh, the, the hype solo laners, and this is a problem that plagues Genji in general. We're thinking about yeah. Summit, we're thinking about Keen, right? Like, Rascal is not necessarily a player that comes to mind. Um, but then you look at how well he's able to navigate those lanes, how no matter what the matchup is, he's like one of the epitomes of, okay, you take the counter matchup and then I beat you, and then I take the count, but I, I take the opposite end of the matchup and I still beat you. Yeah. Which is just insane. Like, Genji is always looking on peak form, and Rascal has been incredibly consistent, both inside and outside of lane. Yeah. And uh, of course, these are former teammates as well, played on King Zone together, did Khan and Rascal. So it will be fun having a look at uh, what they're going to be able to get done here as Damwon Kia are going to do the thing that we've wanted every team to do against Genji, and that is actually choose the red side. Genji have been, uh, yes, very much favoring red side League of Legends, and so they're going to have that denied away from them in at least game number one. I think that's a great call. As yet, I mean, as a Showmaker fan, it, it hasn't been bad. As a Tomokia fan, uh, it has not been the greatest. Uh, of course, yeah. recently losing yet another series, even with Ghost getting swapped in. Looking so good in game number one as well. That was really the shocking part to me. It was like, okay, Ghost is back. He's looking really good. They're looking great. And then, yeah, we, we all know what happened afterwards. Yeah, um, that's, they lost. Uh, a bit of a struggle. Yeah. Um, I got some trivia for you. Um, you probably glanced because I've just had a look at the stat myself. But how many games do you think Genji have won on the blue side as a 7 0 team? Okay, 7 0, let's say five games? They've won one game on blue side. One. They're one, in, they're, they're one out of three on blue side as a 7 0 undefeated team in the LCK. Boy, what a wacky stat. What a wacky stat. They are 13 out of 16 on red side. They have played a lot of games on red side because so many people do think that the blue side is stronger. Genji disagree. But uh, it's just a fun fact for you there. As uh, we hop into the draft already, Senna's in down, taken away. And uh, Senna, of course, aimed at a uh, good old Ghost, who's still pretty good at the champion despite having some recent failings on it. As, oh, this is a bit sad, because uh, Rascal did tell Khan that he was going to get the lease in and kick his head off, or something like that, as that's a big giggle out of uh, Showmaker. Maybe laughing at the fact that uh, the Renekton was banned away, as there is the Glister ban against Ruler, one of those things that you can't let through. And now let's have a look at the first pick. I'm not expecting Jungle to be locked in here, although they could. Okay. Because I kind of thought that Clid would go back to the Volley Bear, right? Just I, I actually, I, I actually, yeah. Volley. 
Um, I, I, I agree. I think that. But, but I think that the main thing is that if the Lee was open, they would 100% gone for that. Yes. Um, but I don't think Gen.G rates picks like the Viego as high as some other teams. I think that a later Gwen pick would really be on theme for them. <laughs> something that they've done in the, uh, uh, the, the past as well, consistently. And set is open. And uh, Damakia, I do hope you... No, no, okay. So set rumble. I assume we'll be given over here because BDD is I mean, Nocturne's very available happy to. as well. Oh, do well, there you go. Set Nocturne? Yeah. yeah um, I think you do. That makes for a pretty good dive composition from Gen G. Pretty <laughs> solid draft, yes. Yeah. Um, has Gen G been playing much dive uh, recently, Chronicler? One could say so. I believe they have, as yeah. uh, Varus is going to be the last Ooh. pickup. So, going to let through the set for the moment. Well, dumb one. Interesting. Oh, I, okay, so in a normal situation, I would say I, I really don't think the GM deserves the type of priority, but um, Ghost has been having a really rough time. It's not just Ghost, it's Barrel as well, and I don't think it's fair to single out Ghost specifically because it is definitely a just whole bot lane problem. Uh, yep. We saw that because some of the problems continued even when Showmaker swapped towards the bot side role. So putting additional uh, attention in a draft to get a comfortable matchup available for Mr. Ghost, I think is a uh, is an understandable call. Um, do expect to see some of the picks that go really well together with the Varus taken away. So Rakan is interesting. Like I kind of expect them to just bend the Kench next as well. Yeah, uh, I'd, maybe I'd hope that the Kench. Oh, unless uh, Beryl wants to play it. Yeah, Good. that was what I'm thinking as well. Ah, uh, there we go. <laughs> no. <laughs> I think Yasuo was very recently played over in the LPL as well, uh, in the mid lane. Not entirely sure who was playing it, but I do rem remember some whisperings of some Yasuo's being played. Of course, Showmaker Canyon uh, played it at MSI. That exact combo. Would have been fun. It I don't think Damwonkia in its current form should get anywhere near the champion as, <laughs> hey, BDD. Yeah. There is the Azir ban. Always going to happen. No surprises there. Uh, although this might be a very old mid lane Nocturne, right? We don't know where it's going yet. Could also go to Rascal, which I suspect is uh, going to be the case. Rascal's played eight games of the uh, Nocturne so far. Let's have a look at the win rate. Currently 62%, so not exactly flawless. Ooh, this, and this is kind of nice, because I don't think Barrel's Fresh is that great. But this is kind of what you want to pick up here, because I think if Gen.G get the Fresh, life is very happy. It works exceptionally well with the Varus. I think it's also a good matchup into the Leona, so... Yeah, I think picking um, the Leona here is actually really dangerous. Although, they do have Skinnergy down on the do. bottom side with they their do. own skins. So, that's important. It's comfort, but that's... that's I don't think Beryl's going to pick his own skin, though. He never does. It's always very uh, frustrating. That's going to be... Uh... Oh, Lucian's still available, by the yeah. way, which is pretty ah, nutty. Okay, I know. I like the Brom as well. Um, personally, I prefer the Fresh. I think that provides you a little bit more safety into picks like Diana. But the Brom is also really good into what is already free melee characters with a, And uh, also frost. really good into Jin. Yeah. It just and it and it synergizes well with Varus, right? Varus with Fela Blade's gonna be able to easily proc those winter spites. So I think as a whole, it's quite a nice pick. BDD, is it gonna be the Syndra pick? I think this is way better, but this is way better. It is BDD. <laughs> so but we'll be looking at it. Also, the Lucian, if uh, if life is ever going to get out of lane, Lucian is Braum's best friend, mm -hmm. as we know. You were talking about proccing the concussive blows. Definitely, that's, that's a that's it's uh, such a classic. Remember oh, when yeah. that was like the bot lane you had to be? Yeah, <sighs> good times. Except when you had to play into it. This is not surprising. Yeah. More surprising is he made it through the draft this far. Yeah, it's pretty nutty. Although, I mean. This is looking like we're going to have Set versus uh, the Lucian, which is not going to be the greatest of times for the Set. So we'll see. Uh, it, you know, unless it is going to be Viego mid lane, they could also do something like that if they would like to. But uh, Genji's draft is looking pretty clean right now. As of course it is going to be that Nocturne for the top side of the map. Rascal pretty good on this one. But Viego has been dominating and it might be an opportunity for, you know, Khan to fight back against the solo kill god up there towards the top side of the map in Rascal. And I think the Kia draft, if you get through the laning phase unscathed, you are looking peachy. Like, this is a super strong skirmishing team fight draft. You have long range engage, you have great combos in the comp if itself, but you shouldn't get through the laning phase unscathed. There's Pryor yeah. on the bot side with the Varus and Brom, incredibly impressive lane. There's Lucian in the mid lane, self-explanatory. Yep. And there is Nocturne in the top side, so basically, 
every single lane is going to be under immense pressure. And Clid, I think, has been the most consistent early game jungler that we've had within the LCK. So, Gen G, um, I think they should have uh, no problems with finding early game leads here. And Gen G with early game leads against a Dumbledore that has been struggling in the early game seems like a bad combination for Dumbledore fans. Indeed. Uh, I think that their draft just looks straight up better. There is, you know, the. The combination of Viego being very strong and Diana set. But, I mean, it feels a little bit isolated here, you know? Like, they, yeah. they do have it, and they, like if those mid-game skirmishes do actually happen, if they manage to find these little skirmishes early and really change the look of these lanes, then we might fall into some issues. But here we are onto the rift. Let's see how it's going to go. Heavy expectation is that Gen G should be able to find a pretty comfortable win here in this match. I know it's weird. Especially if you haven't been watching the LCK throughout this season thus far. Um, but that's just the reality that we live in. Consistent oh, Gen G. And consistent Barrel as well. Your skin's really cool, dude. Oh. Such a good skin. I know, and he's just he's still not taking it. At least Clear picked the right skin. He did. Canyon is going to be taking the Ayaka skin. Um, shout outs over there. Maybe Beryl told him to take that particular skin. I'm not entirely Maybe sure what it's actually called, but it makes yeah. Diana look like a character from a certain other game that Beryl does like quite a lot. <laughs> it's also what his own, uh, his own skin is based upon, right? So it makes a lot of sense. Life also gone for the exhaust here, um, which I think is really nice into what is going to happen inevitably in the mid to late game, where a ruler is going to have Canyon trying to jump on top of him, and uh, he's not going to enjoy that generally as a uh, character yep. wants to do. And it's going to be a lot easier with the exhaust to survive that initial amount of burst. Think about how cool it could have been. Oh, I'm still, I'm still triggered. I know. Oh, dear me. I agree. Yeah. Well, can't you know get a bit stabby up here towards the top side. Look to uh, try and push Rascal around. See how he's going to do there. Showmaker is going to struggle here in this lane. Has managed to get, uh, you know, at least one of the minions. It's something. Yeah. Even with uh, the. Um, second wind, uh, second, you know, and uh, the uh, additional amount of sustain that you also get with Doran's shield. It's still just not great, and this is a power move. Yeah. Right there. This is saying, okay, we are prior, what, what you gonna do? And the answer is, I don't think anything. Nope. Yeah, um, they do wow. have vision of this. However, I mean, you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. And uh, Cliff could possibly even just go red to red here. I don't know whether... Yeah, he is. Oh, he doesn't hit free. Oh, wow. Okay. This changes things. And he is going to start this one up. Canyon not actually wanting to go for it. Respecting the Pryo. As no, he's just skirting around the vision. Gets that ward in. Did land the E, but instead is just going to go back over and locks down his own red buff. We did need to be a little bit careful as uh, Rascal is going to move on over. The priority man really is allowing Clid to not really care about a level deficit, but it's still going to be the red buff secured by Canyon, so no three buff to happen here. As, uh, yeah, Varus on a bit of a losing streak recently. Bodes well for Damon here. It's actually really big. If Clid soaks one minion of experience um, in the mid lane, then he's fine. Right, like, he, he does actually hit, uh, hit level two of just uh, double Raptor camp as well as his own red. Um, but because he doesn't, like that play just costs him a lot of time. Canyon gets slowed down a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. However, I do think that um, maybe they want to try and contest because I think the urban skirmishing is way better. Yeah, and might have an early exactly fight what here. Damon Kia want, right? They want to be trying to skew these lanes as BDD. I think. Junked a little bit. Genji get themselves into the river though. As now Showmaker is going to move on over. It's going to be a four v four. Possible teleports on the top side of the map. I think Bron is so good in these early fights. Gotta be yeah. careful. Teleport is going to be channeled from Rascal. Flashes out from Damwon Kia. They want to allow Khan to get ahead as there's the Zenith Blade. Oh no, BDD out of position, gets lit on fire. The rest of Gen G trying to get on over here. BDD will be taken down. And the first blood goes over to Showmaker as well. As the misses go down, Khan finishes his teleport also, trying to go invisible yet again as he flashes away. He's burning down with the red buff, but the potion is going to cancel it out. Flash forward from Rascal, but doesn't find anything. 
And now Clint uh, at 100 health. Barrel chasing behind him. Ghost picks it up with a fourth bullet. Has beaten he's teleported back in to go again. This is just ridiculous. A double kill for Ghost. And dumb one, Kia, this is exactly what they wanted. Even gets the cannon. Glorious stuff. Wow. Well, uh, the bot lane's looking a lot better now. Yeah, and, Ghost uh, is like, yeah, you want to bench me? No, 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 no. Oh, and if you play that, like I said, I think that you should always win that. As Gen G, I think the Braum in the early game is so oppressive. And you see the double kill, they respect that, right? But BD, you have Rascal. All BDD needs to do is just stay with his team. Yeah. And you, you, they can never go for this. I really like the attempt from Life to try and sell the jit, but Instead, Domon Kia, life gets taken down. Rascal flashes for an attempt to kill Khan and then doesn't actually make it work, which is also just that flash from Khan away from the arrow as well. Rather, than Rascal here flashes forward. Yeah, Khan and then Khan just dashes out of the way. Oh He's like bait God. successful. And then you can't, like, Rascal loses out on so much AD because he uses his Dustbringer in an attempt to get something done. Clint tries to get over the wall, but it's never ever going to work. And that was just honestly a really big mis-execution. Yeah, from, well, uh, from Genji. Khan might be in trouble. Teleports come forward from Showmaker as Khan is going to go back to him now. Okay, face break is going to be available as Showmaker looks for it onto Rascal. Doesn't quite get there as BDD. He's roamed up. Canyon's here as well. Haymaker comes out. Showmaker, remember, does not have the flash as Khan. He's going to be taken down. Noble sacrifice here from the top laner of Darmon Kia. And they don't win the skirmish. What is happening, Atlas? We're, we're six minutes in and we've things, had four kills. Things are happening. Oh this is great. If you were watching yesterday, no things were happening. And now today we have things all over the place and it's fantastic. I don't mind. I don't even care whether they're good or bad things. Doesn't I just matter. want more things. Um, because this actually, to me, is a very welcome development for the LCK because um, not doing anything in the current meta is really bad. Yeah. Like, you need to try and consistently make plays to get yourself advantages. And we see Genji uh, attempt to punish Khan, the immediate teleport from Showmaker, evens out the fight a little bit, but the prio that BDD has on this roam, and the fact that Canyon at this point in the game is not as strong as he's going to be once Moonfall is available, is a big problem, right? Because if Moonfall's available here, you turn around that fight and you blow them up. But instead, you give up your top laner, that's a very important kill going over to BDD, who's going to have even more pressure in his lane, because while Showmaker has been playing really well for the rest of the map, um, he is very far behind in CS, right? Because he's roaming so much, and because he's playing in Solution. It's not an easy matchup. No, not great. Barrel going to return to the bottom side of the map. Uh, takes a wind spine for his trouble as the Dancing Grenade. Um, that's uh, it's doing a fair bit of damage there to Ruler. But unfortunate, he doesn't quite have that serrated Dirk that we like to talk about online just yet. As uh, Damonkia hold on to a slight advantage when it comes to gold. You can see BDD, man, uh, it's, uh, it's a big wave stacked up for Showmaker to collect, but it's a 30 CS advantage. Feels pretty good for Evolution. And what an early skirmish went horrible. We do see the exact faults that Genji had with this composition. And what they're doing is consistently using the prio generated by Lucian in the mid lane to roam. The reason why they play topside goes well is because BDD shoves it in the lane, roams the top, right? Like that Ermi skirmish, the setup was really good. Sure, the execution fell flat, but they recognize again, we have a Brom early game. We have a Lucian. Like, we can fight, we can skirmish. And just recognizing that and actually following up on it is something that um, a lot of our teams haven't done. Genji yeah. recently has started to do this a lot more, but the really interesting thing is that Dumbon Kia is actually matching it, and that is something that recently they have not been able to do whatsoever. No, exactly. Uh, also, really good timing on this Rift Herald as well, as uh, Canyon started that one up on the reset of the bottom lane, knowing that they will have advantage as Ghost and Barrel made it back a little bit earlier. And so now some plates will be able to be collected here by Damwon Kia. Certainly a lot tidier in the early game outside of the ridiculous skirmishing that was uh, going on. Still uh -oh. like where they're going on the map as Khan might be in trouble yet again. Clint gonna go over and look for some Krugs as the fear comes out. And Rascal is putting on a lot of pressure as, oh dear, there's the equalizer onto Canyon. Paranoia comes down as well. It's a really, really dead Diana. The punishment, just beautiful from Genji. Shenji reading the map state so well. And this is, again, this is the payoff from having BDD have Pryo, because you know yeah. why they knew that Kanye was there, because of the ward. And look at all the vision. Look at all the vision that Damonkia had. Yeah. And Clear just walks past all of it. Oh. And now they're looking to try and dive Khan as well. 
as he is going to get feared, but Rascal's going to take a lot of damage. Yep, that's going to be the trade. Goodbye, double buffs into the nether. We will not see them again. And uh, yeah, it's a good trade for Khan. Mayhem. Absolute mayhem. Mayhem. I love it. Look at this wave state for Showmaker as well. Feeling pretty good about this one. I think that's uh, set without, uh, you know, yes, Canyon died, but uh, he is uh, now out on the map again and not spotted, so you need to play very respectful, especially with the Flash still available, because Flash Face Breaker doesn't really have that much counterplay unless you have your finger on the button yourself. Indeed. Canyon will pick that up. Showmaker just going to walk at BDD. Case in point. Yeah. Canyon comes on down. We'll see where that Rift Herald is going to be placed. We're going to check this out once again. Oh. Just the knowledge that Genji had, like, just feels like a set play played beautifully. Yeah. I don't it's, mean set the champion. No, it's, it's, it's so clean. Like, it's literally, like, it's textbook. Yeah, right. Push in, what jungle, set up a play, and end. Like, just, just take them down, and then this is very unfortunate. Rascal um, didn't have to tank that long. I think that he thought that he would be out of range of the Heartbreaker there. Not the case. However, if he, if he dies before Khan, then there's a chance that Khan can oh, yeah. actually like immune that, get the reset, and then they both die. So it's possible. Yeah, it's very close to a uh, yeah, just a two for nothing for Khan. But thankfully for Gen G, they just trade one for one. Still not the greatest of situations. The laning prowess for Dom Key at the moment isn't really there, and this is also, I think, one of the main reasons why. Gen G have been as dominant as they have been. Yes, their early game is good, but it also comes from how informed these players are at the moment. Because if you look, even with Ghost picking up a double kill, yeah. Bruder and Life have a CS lead. Yeah. And like a pretty big one as well, right? And they've been consistently able to have lane pressure. Oh Already talked about the mid lane, uh, top lane also the same, but with a lot more attention paid to Khan, so it's understandable there. Uh, however, Double Key have also been able to very nicely sneak away some objectives. Rascal. Yeah, gets on over. There's in goes Canyon, actually. Showmaker's gonna move on through. Good fear back as there is the Flash Showstopper, and Rascal is mega dead. He does have Flash, but he's not going to use it Bait. intelligently. Yeah, thought they wanted to, to make something happen there. Uh, BDD and. Uh, they're both buffing up, but none of that, and that's Harold. It's going to be a lot of plates. This is a pretty good early game from Je from uh, Damon Kia, considering what they've been able to do uh, in recent games. It's a good look, and uh, you know we were talking about how good Genji looked at the end of spring, right? And then they go up against Damon Kia, and they look like a completely different team. I don't want to start talking about it too early or anything like that, but maybe it's uh, that. The monkey hasn't been quite got off their back yet. I don't. I. I still think that um, Gen G are going to dictate a lot of the pace of this game, at least for now. But um, I don't think it's Gen. Like outside of that one fight that we already went over a couple of times on the bot side, I actually think that it's just Don Monkey. Also, they're contesting things. They're doing stuff. Doing they're stuff, making yeah. plays. Like they're roaming. They're not giving up random kills without a reason in lane. They're always looking on the map. Uh, and even though Canyon dies there, gets back, is able to set up a nice play on the top side, picks up the Herald as well earlier, right? So it's all within the realm of feasibility, and I can't wait for the first actual team fight because I feel like both these two teams are not going to back down from any fight, and this should be some very, very explosive setups here. Yeah. Very exciting. The early skirmishing potential on both sides actually is extraordinarily high, so hopefully we do see a bit of that pretty soon. Um, Drake did go over to uh, Dom One Kia. In fact, they've had every neutral objective on the map thus far. As, uh, next one going to be the cloud, so we'll have to see whether it's going to be infernal or the ocean. Monsoon season, so you know, more likely that it's the ocean soul. It's been raining a lot. Yeah, and uh, it's just not looking like they're going to stop. As uh, Ruler picks up this mini wave, and it's a bit of a lull state. But uh, I think we'll allow it for now. Often we get a little bit upset when it comes to lull states, but we've had a pretty fiery early game. So uh, we'll allow it. And the plates are going to fall. We'll have a look to see who managed to pick up the most value from that one. Double dashy mythics coming through from both the Jin and from the Varus. Varus Claw and, of course, the Gale Force is BDD. Finds a little shot onto Showmaker, but Showmaker feels like he's out of the woods. As uh, the ghost signature there. It's, it's so cute, isn't it? Yeah. The little ghosty. It's adorable. BDD 
Also finishing his cold out, um, which is a nice amount of gold. Just uh, basically adds him a uh, three kill, as we saw there. This is enthusiastic, as we do have light in the general vicinity. Yeah, yeah, just gonna let this one go back as there's the equalizer. Flash out from Canyon. Good stun from Beryl to keep his jungler alive. Some buttons now on cooldown for Gen G. There's now the re-engage. They're looking for it. Rascal flashes away. They might just take that. No paranoia, no equalizer. And so Shirley should just belong to Damwon Kia based on the button availability. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen. Nicely done here from Damon Kia. Just weathering the first volley. Or salvo, I guess, depending on what you want to say. It's a, it's a bit over-enthusiastic, because I think that if there is no Shirley to be found, then that is a play you're happy with. This is also going to be the first turret block. And Damon Kia are actually going to get into this uh, around 15-minute walk with a substantial gold lead, which is going to make Damon Kia fans very happy, because that has been a while. Yeah. And they're doing it against Genji. So that's a, that's a great look. Um, but what we saw there was a lot of investment from not the greatest of position, right? Like the lockdown wasn't really there, and if you don't have lockdown, you need enough damage. Uh, they are setting up around this Drake, though, and I think that this one you can still give up as Gen.G, which uh, looks like they might be considering that. But their poke is really good. That's something we haven't really seen yet, is what Don Kia, they want to play forward. They want to engage, right? You have to set Diana, the Leona. But then Gen.G, you want to play a little slower, and the Braum should help with that. <laughs> okay, Clint. Just scrap shields his way forward. Now the equalizer comes out beautifully positioned. Lay it on top is the glacial fissure, but doesn't find too much joy as the culling also goes a little bit awry. But Damon Kia just, yeah, they leashed the Drake for Clid to go and take, and that's actually going to be pretty important as it is the infernal soul. Oh, the communication between Ruler and Clid, they're absolutely beautiful. Because Ruler primes it, right? Like he charges up, holds that arrow, and Clid's like, wait. Yep. Wait, and then he goes in and uh, finds it. And as you said, at the very least, it will buy you a lot of time. And uh, in the best case scenario, it just gets you a lot of war plays being set up here. Oh, yeah, cleared. Kind of gang positioning doesn't have the equalizer, but the Flamesmith is still going to do a whole bunch of work. Teleport's coming down, as that's going to be the first reset here for Khan. Can he actually make it work, though, as there's the Blast Cone, courtesy of the Infernal Rift, as Khan's going to dive on top of BDD. A lot of damage down here, as Ghost was looking to try and trade back, but Ruler turns up in the nick of time. Okay, Curtain Call comes down. Mines cleared with a couple of these bullets as the last one. Pretty close to BDD, but he was out of range. The Showmaker's on the top side of the map, minding his own business. <laughs> it's like... I was, of all the characters that love fighting, Set is in there. He's just yeah. in the side lane. He's just autoing turrets and yeah, with uh, with the passive, he is going to get through those very, very quickly. Nicely done. And in the end, it's yet again a favorable done one. Kia trade. Gen G showing very clearly that with the amount of flashes and summoning <laughs> regularly <laughs> they are very happy to go for this. Where are they going? Where are they going? That's what did, uh, what, what really made it hard. And this is really, really clear here, because um, I think this this goes okay now. If that moonfall goes off, like, I'm pretty sure Khan um, gets a kill and kill it there no matter what. And then the immediate punish comes through, right? BDD went for the, uh, it's really interesting, went for the shoot though here, which in this scenario doesn't necessarily save him. Uh, but it does give him a lot more confidence to go in for these short-range plays. Yeah. And again, it's just symptomatic of both these two teams not wanting to give each other an inch. It's constant fighting for every single play. Love it. It's exactly what we want to see. More fighting, more of the time. <laughs> uh, we're going to get a charge, Shirley. Not going to be denied this time around. Rascal lying in wait, paranoia at the ready. All of our R buttons. <laughs> Uh, sorted outside of the curtain call, which should be coming up relatively soon, but also isn't exactly the most pivotal in the next fight. As in goes Showmaker now looking for Ruler. There's the face breaker. They get the cleanse out. Showmaker doesn't bite off more than he can chew. Doesn't invest the flash. Just wanted to get that cleanse. There was no flash though for Ruler, so it was a, certainly an opportunity for Showmaker to go for the flash and the showstopper. Could have gone for it. 
then also would have eaten the glacial fissure, right? And maybe then the follow up is there, and it uh, yeah, it becomes a bit of a risk. I do definitely think it could have killed Ruler. It's more about how the fight would have gone after that, and that yeah. one is a little bit, a little bit hazier. Um, however, uh, coming into this game, you know, we looked at each other and said, okay, what do we expect here, and who has the early game match? Well, we expect it to be Gen G. That horrible level three four skirmish, yeah, tilted in favor of Don Kia. Um, but it wasn't enough, right? Like, that in of itself, Soul Genji still fight back very aggressively. And, and Ruler is still Ruler, right? And, it is, uh, yeah. That's a big It's going to be hard to stop him from shooting you over and over again with these piercing arrows, so we do have to bear that in mind. Starmonk here. Minute to go until this Infernal Drake comes up. Opportunity for both teams to stack three of them, which feels real good. God, yeah. On, yeah like you're saying, on both of these. Yeah, right? So whoever takes control of this mid game is in a huge advantage just based on that Drake. And the fact that Clid was able to steal it away, right? This uh, should really be a moment where Damonkira is setting up for Infernal Soul Point. But after that steal and after that, uh, you know, just great passive to play from Gen G. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, you know, triple Infernal being a possibility. And I think what you want to do here as Genji is you need to be the first one into the river, and then you need to use the poke of Varus and Lucian consistently. Yeah. Make sure that this fight is not even when you go in. Otherwise, life needs to have the wrong performance of his life, because on even footing, the dive from Domoki is really hard to deal with for Genji, right? They have a very squishy lineup, so it's pivotal that either they find someone, blow them up instantly, Will they get enough damage done before the fight starts? Well, might be starting off now as Beryl. Let's go on cooldown. It's Khan in the mist. As there's the culling, doesn't find anyone. Just a few shots onto Beryl at the end there. The Drake's still at about half health. Gets angry at Gen G. They do group back up again. Khan looking for a potential flank. The piercing arrow is not exactly doing a whole lot there to Showmaker as the dragon is going to reset. Picked up again by Ghost and Canyon. Can't just stand around here for too much longer. There's the Equalizer. In they go. Solar Flare is good. Stopwatches have been employed as it's somehow the set that takes the Dragon. Darmok here in the back of this pit. Showstopper comes in as the Varus just doing so much damage in the back line. Eventually, he is taken down as Showmaker and Khan make their way out. Oh, man. Okay, so advantage goes over to Darmok here when it comes to the Drake, but they lose one extra in the fight. I think it's a trade you take as Domon Kia, but man, this series is delivering so far, because this game is crazy. We see both teams really not wanting to give each other any space. Showmaker, as you pointed out, I, I want to see how he's doing <laughs> except the Dragon, because that doesn't make that much sense to me. It went down to 13 health, and then yeah, I, I think, you know, he's yeah, 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 or something. In, in the brawl, uh, maybe he'll, uh, he'll, he'll find a way to get it done. Um, big there, and that was, I think, one of the reasons why the fight was not as favorable for Genji as it could have been was that Ruler, he didn't have his I second item finish yet, right? Like, no Mana Mune yet is still stacking it as well. Yeah. Because you pointed it out very nicely, the arrows aren't doing quite as much yet. And that meant that when the Monkey actually went in, it was in a considerable more favorable state um, than otherwise could have been expected. As they're the one who pretend they want to go for this, but it's immediate initiation come through. Find Rascal here, who's like very ready for the flash over the wall, which is really nicely done, but this does leave Ruler open. Now we see why Seth is a fun champion. <laughs> he doesn't really get to do anything, and yeah, uh, this current call from Ghost. Um, that ain't the one you want. Now look at that. Yeah. Just, just obliterated. That's uh, very unfortunate. So Ghost, a bit of a whoopsie there in that situation. Let's see whether he can tidy up the point. And in addition to that, as you uh, already said as well, BDD's calling, it doesn't do that much yet, was also not on the Ooh, next item. It's it stunned up as Ghost trying to make up for the situation, flash out, but not going to be enough. Paranoia comes through and oh my goodness, the stopwatch denies so much right there. Incredibly high value as Khan looks to come in, gets, uh, gets a bit angry and this Viego is in a real good spot. At this point in time, has a level advantage. I believe is possibly the highest level in the game right now. And Khan just quietly is massive. He's huge. Enormous. As he is uh, able to 
move forward with such confidence, has gone for the tanky build this time. This is a bit of a stretch though, yes, Clint is dead, but you are playing into a heavy poke on position who might be looking for some damage. Well, see whether they can do it. There's no Moonfall available, but Showstopper is going to be there. Rascal, no paranoia also, so this Baron just goes for free. And yeah, clear. Okay. I mean, he had the Equalizer, but he wasn't there to use it. No culling, no paranoia, no way to get in. Didn't even have Glacial Fissure. There was just no way to start any fight. And uh, Darmonkia read it and take all they want. That's a very important thing with this composition from Gen G. When you're playing from behind in terms of gold, you might be fine as, yeah, oh, Cliff getting caught here. Also, I think if he, the moment that awards comes down, he starts running, he's fine, right? But like he hesitates for a split second, wants to get a little bit more in. Um, that on stopwatch, man. Yeah, <laughs> really good. Um, that's a Rolex, that's an that's a absolute Rolex. Is that what we call like class. great stopwatches now? I thought we went with sundials. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, I've um, I've reformed. I'm no longer calling sundials. <laughs> uh, my brain was a little bit absent for that particular uh, call out. As Genji, I mean, they're not dead yet. It's only a 3,000 gold lead. But uh, I'm looking now with the Baron. I'm gonna try and siege this mid lane. Here we go on the flank. Puts down some mist. Genji immediately move out of the way. Clid now has his Zonyas. But... This is rough. Damonkir in a pretty good spot. And I'm, I'm happy you pointed it out. That little play around the Baron Pit, right? From Genji and then moving forward. We dare see an inherent limitation of their composition. It's something that we already saw earlier as well when they set up that... I remember like 10, 15 minutes back when we saw Clid and Rascal. Clid uses ultimate, Rascal go in. Yeah. They don't actually have a great way to start fights or an immense amount of CC. Like, Brom provides them with a lot, but they need to be... As soon as our buttons are down, yeah. they really don't have very and, many options. So Damonkia being able to make plays like this that eat all of those, all of those R buttons, and then, of course, added to the fact that they also recognize that they can then take anything they want on the map for the next minute or whatever. And that's the big difference, right? Because I don't remember the last time I saw Domo Kia do that. I know. That's the thing while. that's most impressive, you know? The doing of things. <laughs> it all comes back to the doing of things, Chronicle. And speaking of which, Showmaker finds himself the uh, base breaker. Good Zonyas from Clid, but I think he's not out of the woods just yet. There's the big punch. And Beryl looking to try and limp out of this one as well. Khan is huge in that back line as Showmaker flashes forward and dies. It's not exactly optimal as Heartbreaker gets Khan into the back line. My god, the Viego does so much work. That curtain call is going to work, but he has to actually hit some bullets. Doesn't manage to do so as Khan picks up one reset. Canyon will look for Rascal and has the help of his team. Yep, that's a very dead Nocturne. Now Ruler trying to run away from Khan. The flash forward as the ulti comes down and Ruler, yep, decides to hit him with his Prowler's Claw. That's going to kill him, unfortunately. And uh, now Khan is just running away with this game. He's an absolute monster. Wow. I am so impressed with what Dumbledore has shown me because this is a team that we have not seen in a while. Uh, yeah. I, I, d I don't even know if we saw this Damon Kia in spring. Because I think that they won a lot, but we do cast our minds back. There were a lot of games that they shouldn't have won. Yeah, right. But here they're earning it um, as much as you possibly can. I think the start of this fight is pretty okay, uh, as the equalizer damage is quite nice. But it is a bit of a disjointed fight. And Rascal is stuck on the other side of the wall where he doesn't want to be, so he can't actually do that much damage. Then Showmaker getting over enthusiastic <laughs> is one thing, but again, the stopwatches from Canyon have just been insane. Life is an absolute hero here. Um, Sacrifices his life to make sure the rest of his team gets out, but Rascal is still in no man's land, gonna get taken out by Canyon, and the crucial thing here is that yet another Drake goes to Dom One Kia. Oh, yeah, let's uh, watch it on. No Korean's not good enough to understand what he said just there, but I assume it was something positive, but <laughs> still looking pretty serious. Yeah. Very focused. On, uh, on Khan's base, and you can tell that this is the match that Damonkia really want to win, right? This is the one where they have to try and get back on track. Serious mode right now. 
three and a half minutes until Infernal Soul for Darmon Kia, if they manage to pick up the next dragon. And they've moved up to about a 5.5k gold lead. Oh, God. You know what your worst nightmare is? If you're, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> this guy right even, here. It's even worse if you are a Lethality Varus. Look at Khan's build. Atlas. Yeah. Yeah, he's, uh, he's yeah. not going to die, is he? No. This is double 80 carry that's come through as well. I mean, it's only Clid that's doing the magic damage. So as long as Khan stays out of the way of him, he's going to be absolutely fine. He's also got the best item in the game, as Brendan Valdez would say in that stopwatch. 650 gold bounty. I know where my pog vote's going. Oh, wait, I don't have one. Is that a hint towards me to make sure I don't uh, make no, it's questionable a, it's decisions? It's a hint towards the LCK to give me my vote back. I want my vote back. Hey, media needs those votes, okay? <laughs> Uh, maybe there is an argument for me to get my vote back. Uh, we'll set up a poll in chat. Do I deserve it or does the media deserve it? Well, I, I think the existence of media makes your collar cast just look <laughs> okay. not as bad sometimes. So, you know, it's, uh, it's a little column A, a little column B. That's the I'd personally say. Do they need three, though? Maybe I could be media. Like, I could be a stealth media vote. I like it. Every once in a while. They like don't no know that it's me. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. I can I can make votes and never have to take the blame. <laughs> Beautiful. Perfect crime. Yeah, I'll give it to Ghost this game. He's got two kills in the first five minutes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's actually not playing too badly outside of oh, that one no. curtain call he, he that was just, a big problem. He just shouldn't die, right? Like, that's all he needs to do. And he only died once this game. So as long as he's doing that on the gin, yeah. providing supportive fire, it's fine. In goes Beryl. BDD's going to have to flash away immediately. Good glacial fissure as Beryl uses the best item. Now the paranoia comes in, but they're not going to be able to save their Leona. Rascal, this might be overly optimistic as Fly gets in there as well. Ghost in the back line doing a bunch of work right here, but BDD as well getting some things done, but now the resets come forward. Khan is just massive. He's got a big old door that he's holding as well and having a good time doing so. And now this curtain call looks so much better. That shield bow ain't shielded nothing. As Khan gets another reset, turns into a Lucian as well, and Ruler. He's all by himself, and I think that they're just going to lose the game as Canyon almost flashes over that piercing arrow, which was pretty cute. And I really like the Monk and W. Uh, Yumi as well as, yeah, Khan's uh, going to kill Ruler once again. Uh, oh! Oh! How, how did, oh! Oh! No. Yeah. Oh, the rewards are reaped for Dumbledore. He has amazing early game. Indeed. They found the skirmish that they needed, and they kept doing things. That's all we have to take away. The Nexus dies. Damon Kia going to take game one against Gen G. It is, of course, a best of three. Gen G have an opportunity to bounce back, and now they can get on their coveted red side. Remember, only one victory on the blue side for Gen G all season. Now they are one out of four games. Uh, they found a victory. This is going to be, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult side for them to play on, I guess. So now they can elect to go on the red side. And uh, we'll see whether that's going to work out better for them as it's a much better looking uh, Damon Kia in this first game. Long time no see, Damon Kia. Yeah. Uh, it's, been, it's, it's good having you back. It's been a while. And of course, it's one game, um, but I still feel like this one game. Khan looks angry. Is... Did you just see him right there? Yeah. Oh, he looked like an anime character, just brooding, you know, one of the <laughs> angsty ones. Normally that's Showmaker. Yeah, but it's and it's definitely normally not Khan, you know? He's <laughs> he's from like a rom-com. He's, he's the comic relief in a romantic comedy, which is comedy on top of more comedy. And not, not right now. Looking at that game, I think that for Genji, it's really easy. If you don't lose that first skirmish, if you play that out cleanly, if BDD stays 